afternoon. How's everybody doing this Sunday? Hopefully well. I think I ate some stuff. Washed out the meat, so we're good. We're good. We're good. Um, yeah. So today I have, um, hi. How are you guys? Um, I have another friend and member of the Black Country Music community come and we're going to talk about all sorts of stuff. All sorts of stuff. Um, but we're just going to break it down. So let me get her on. Let me get Julie on and let's just start this conversation. Um, I'll tell you. Let me joke. Okay. Here she comes. Hi. Hey. How's it going? How are you? Good. How are you? I'm, I'm doing great. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you so much for uh, asking me to be on this here. Let me just set, make sure my phone's all good. You can hear um, everything. You look beautiful, like glowy and just Thank radiant. You. That is that is sweat. <laughs> it's hot yeah. outside. It is hot. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It is. I'm not. I don't know. I'm not saying I'm not looking forward to it, but you know. I'm a winter gal. You're winter I don't like sweating unless I'm purposely working out. Yeah. I don't like it being hot unless I'm in a pool. I get with that. tequila. You know? For me. Like then I'm like, oh, let's be hot. <laughs> Otherwise I'm like, I'm all about sweaters. I'm like, why do we need to sweat? Yeah. You... But maybe it's because washing this hair is a... uh, that is, that is this huge challenge. And for me, so I grew up in Florida. So mm -hmm. I'm the, like the warmth of the hot and I love that. But yeah, the hair was always a challenge growing up growing up with it's so much like yeah I um I'm gonna be coming back and forth to Nashville until I'm full-time back and I'm like okay I think I need to braid my hair up a bit because I my hair doesn't like being sweaty I mean I'm from California so we have heat but it's a totally different heat than um Nashville humidity which yeah. is better for your skin we that's the late and younger longer okay and yeah there besides we'll take the it. fact that i'm always like black don't crack and beige don't age that's what <laughs> that's what my dad that's, says he's like beige don't age i'm like daddy you calling me beige I, I, I like, <laughs> i'm like i thought it was more like a honey caramel you know yeah that's what i thought ah but how how are you how are you doing how is nashville and things as they everything's opening up and life and yeah, I mean it's it's an exciting time as cuz I'm I'm double vaccinated now at this point. Um it's exciting some kind of you know life go back in into this into the city but also in like ourselves like the mm -hmm. feeling of outside and seeing other human beings and hugging people and all of that uh, is oh, just I missed it. Yeah, I've missed it so much. So, I'm doing good in in that regards. I think I'm also a little nervous. Mm -hmm. uh, as as we all are, as we're like entering back into the space, um, especially in Nashville, because I think this past year, one as a person, but also just as an artist, I've learned so much about about my worth as an artist and as a person, and the types of spaces and folks that I like surround myself with. I think there's yeah. this thing when you first move to Nashville that they're like, say yes to everything, be in every round, meet. As every person you say meet, you know, right, right with, with everyone, <laughs> and it's it, frankly it's very exhausting, and mm -hmm. it also can be a little bit invalidating too as an artist of color yes. if you're constantly in spaces where people don't like affirm who you are. Mm -hmm. And I, this past year, getting to meet so many people through like Reese and through, I feel like all of us finding each other has been amazing. Um, and even like putting out a song that's um, really message and value driven. It's something that I'm like, as I go out into this world, I want to keep those those values with me as I'm taking opportunities, looking towards different things, mm -hmm. uh, moving back into and it's oh. And it's hard, I feel, and I was just talking to um, me and Mickey were texting about this last night and this morning. Like we, this year, so much has been um it's always been there like the 
the bias, all that stuff's been there, but people have started to see it. But now I'm saying like everything because we're opening has to be put into action. Mm -hmm. Like more work has to be done f to make the spaces be safe and to make it feel like we are contributing yeah. and building our own communities in the midst and like finding that balance between saying yes and realizing what what it is and building the bridge to what it can be yeah is such like a fine line like there are definitely people that i i won't work with at this moment i never say never but i am much more observant of how people are acting how they're posting what what they've done in this past year to be like okay do i want my energy around them in person do i, I want my energy even if they're successful, am I going to create the best by working with them? Yeah. Like, will I feel my energy stifled? Mm -hmm. Like success isn't necessarily the barometer of who I want to work with. It's the character that I've seen. Uh, yeah. And who appreciates my value, whether it be from my writing, from my singing, or, or realizes the sensitivity of the time period that we're in and can be like an ally just in, in holding space, which yeah. I feel wasn't a conversation before this. Like I would go into rooms and I'm like, they could care less. They, could, <laughs> they don't even acknowledge it, which is, yeah. which is fine, which, which was fine. It's not fine anymore because now yeah. there's no excuse for, for not knowing the environment that we're in. Exactly. And I think there's also as we're moving to this, not only looking for someone who, right, is validating, creating space, but also isn't like taking advantage of the moment in a way to like someone who's gonna be celebrating what we bring to the table while not using it for their own gain, I guess. Yeah, not just, tokenizing it. And... Yeah, not tokenizing it, um, I think is also something that, um, that we all need to be, you know, need to be looking out for and, and careful of. Um, Cause I think, you know, while there's lots of like change and hopefulness right now, there's also like, there's so many problems that have existed for so long that it's not <laughs> gonna go away, right? It's so the roots of the system. Like, and I always say, cause I'm, I'm always texting Mickey like constantly. Um, cause I've known her the longest out of all of us. Uh, and she's one of the reasons I moved to, to Nashville. Um, known her for like 13 years, crazy amount of time. Um, but I was texting her and I was like, what I'm worried about and with all this stuff going on with like Morgan Wallen and all these things and like changing eligibility, all this stuff that's so big that people like focus on a person. I'm always like, there's so many factors that are so much deeper. Yeah, I just wanna know that this isn't a trend like, mm -hmm having more like women of color and, and men of color, like on radio and in writers rooms and session players and in those meetings and at the Opry, I'm like, I don't want it to be like, yeah. And then a year from now, once we've been open for a year, it's just fizzles. Yeah. Cause they're, they're putting people up on a pedestal who deserve it a hundred percent deserve it but they're putting them up because they think it's the good thing to do or the thing that's trending instead of realizing no these people have talent they should have been yeah. up there the whole time because if you're not putting them up because of their talent and their worth then they can't maintain that because yeah. you don't stay a trend forever exactly. trends come and go talent stays yeah and i'm like when i want this to be a talent thing yeah and I think for some it is, and I think in some stances it's people wanting to be on observed like they're on the right side of what's mm -hmm. going on, but yeah. only because people are watching, not because people, not because it's the right thing to do to allow it, this space to be for everyone. Yeah. And I think also it's also a measure. We can't just look right at the top. I think mm -hmm. there's so many people in Nashville from like upcoming artists uh, like ourselves to videographers to to session players to everybody mm -hmm. that are not being seen or their work their work is not um, being valued and I also think that there has to be avenues right for artists of color to to kind of rise through the ranks in the same way that other artists do 
without just being that one exception, right? That one yeah. like huge, right? Because like, well, that is a great, amazing thing for representation as well. I think we also need to judge like in a business, right? You could have like, oh, you have a woman CEO, but then mm -hmm. there's no other women and other, you know, senior positions, right? Things like that, I think is how we also need to look at it as we move forward. Because right, as you're saying, we're, we might put someone on a pedestal, but if the other folks who are supporting them around, if they're not getting those people as well, like we're just, we might be setting people up to, yeah. to, to fail. Yeah. Okay. And I think that at least for me, like, I feel like I, my energy and my creative energy, uh, you know, grows when I have people around me that are supporting me and I feel like I'm in a system that is validating. But if, if you're at the top, I think Mickey just put on her story today of like being sick of, of being strong and resilient, mm -hmm. wanting to be soft and exist. And it's like, if that is what being at the top means and you're constantly having to do that, um, it's hard to, to think that it's going to last, right? It's hard to think yeah. that this is a trend if there's not work. Yeah, put. if you're having to constantly fight and people below are understanding it because you have to have people on every level. Like you have to have, like if I'm shooting a video, I want people working on it that understand. Not necessarily everybody has to look like me, but we have to start building this safe community that isn't all what it's always been. Yeah. Which I'm like, like session players, they don't need to all be white men. They yeah. don't. Yeah. Because white men don't hold all the talent. I'm not saying that white men are bad. Yeah. I'm saying there are there is talent that lies in a lot of different skin colors and you could be a woman, like you could be a lot of things, but if they're not allowed in the door to even show their talent, how are they gonna be in that room to create with us? Yeah. How are we going to, if you're not in a room to create a song, how is that song gonna get pitched to an artist, whether they're white, black, you have to, What I guess what I, like what I posted on Twitter today is I was like country music, how are we being inclusive? Like what are we doing to yeah. enhance our inclusivity? Yeah. On every level, like as a whole genre. And like, what are we doing? Because I feel like we're not really talking about the root of the issue. And yes, we can discuss like race and think, but all of that also gets tiring for a few people to hold that yeah. conversation and everybody else to be expecting those few people to hold that conversation mm -hmm. and nobody else is having it. Yeah. <laughs> Down below. Yeah. I mean, like, it's that's exhausting. Like, to be Mickey, I would just be exhausted. Yeah. No. And I don't think also everybody down below is not acknowledging how exhausting that is. How exhausting it is for her. And how that is part of the system that is broken. Yeah. Like that's perpetuating the system. And that I just, I get disappointed. I do. Like I get excited because I see like so many people of color like creating and doing this and like Reese and all this stuff. And then I go, are they going to allow this to keep going when yeah. it's not popular, when we're not all at home looking at our black squares? Like, are they going to allow this? Yeah. The systems, are they going to allow this to mature? Yeah. And I think that it's even, right, it's not just, as we said, it's it's kind of all sides of, of the industry, right? Like, are mm -hmm. there publishers that are setting up rights, like thinking, you know, I think that this artist, like that might set people up that regularly wouldn't be set up, right? Like there, mm -hmm. there's people at so many different levels that might not give people chances that might have these biases that they don't even realize to say like, it's, it's, it's at that level too of mm -hmm. like, you know what, I'm gonna take a chance on this song that this person's songwriting like that, I might not be able to personally relate to some of these stories, but I think that other people can, let's put them in the room, right? With different yeah. people all of these different levels that people are being kept out. And then um, you also, and I always say it benefits the genre because if you're allowing other stories to be told, you're only enhancing the storytelling, which is the basis of country yeah. music. Like if you're, we're only telling one story over and over again through different voices, is that really doing our genre justice? Yeah. Because then you're only showing one viewpoint and there are a lot of viewpoints. There's a lot of different stories. There's a lot of different scenarios that built this country, that built 
what we are supposed to be speaking about. So let them in the room. Yeah. And you don't know what somebody's story is and what they can say until they're in the room. Like you really don't. And people like judge by awards and accolades, but it's a very small circle Mm -hmm. that gets the attention and like has like the songs of that year in like writes it. And it's not always even their fault. Like they are booked out, but having a, like uh, Cam was telling me the other day, like that she brought somebody into the room that might not have been in the room because she was writing with another artist. And she's like, I want to write with this artist, but I'm not going to write with this artist unless there's this person in the room because they yeah. want them in the room so that this person can see. Like, being, yeah, I think sometimes it takes even an even bigger artists or bigger songwriters bringing smaller writers into the room because their talent is still equal. I feel yeah. there oh. is just because this town is also a lot of luck and connection. And if you know somebody and so make the connection so people know each other, make, make yeah. it so we, we are aware, which is why I love like recently stuff. Like we, we can know each other on a different level. So we can pull people in to the circle pull yeah. people into the rights, pull people into a round that we want to not just see four blondes up there. Yeah. Like, let's have the diversity so that it becomes normal to see it. Like right now it's like, Ooh, Oh, there's a black girl up there or there's a Hispanic girl and there's a white. Eventually you'll be like, Oh, there's just four girls up there singing. Exactly. Like, we don't even have to have the preface. Exactly. Because it's so normal. Yeah. It's so normal. Yeah, no, and I think there are definitely some artists, like you mentioned, Cam and others who are who are doing that. I think, like, the first thing is, you know, as, as we're going back on stage, as we're going back on tour, right, are those artists mm-hmm. saying, hey, maybe this person can open up for me that mm-hmm. they might not have thought of before, but now they know of and they've, they've heard their music and, like, yeah. It, like how can I bring this message to an audience, right? Like, th- that's the way that people can use their platforms is, is is connecting not only us to each other or to other artists but also bringing the fans who might not you know watch a panel on diversity and then hear about somebody like that's not there are a lot of fans that might not even know that we exist yeah because of just you know gatekeeping in the industry and whatnot and and how hard it is not only just to get your voice out anyway but also as an artist of color and for you know those folks to, to kind of open their doors as well is that I think could be really beneficial um you know and when people are even asking about like I like I have a song coming out later this summer that's that's going to be dealing about with a race and it's a heavy song and so I'm like okay I, I, I'm already envisioning who do I want to be a part of this song yeah who do I want to be shooting the 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 video who do I want to be doing this and I'm like okay I have the ability to hire a lot of people to bring them into the on a small level like to bring them into the fold so I'm like oh yeah I want this makeup artist and I want to have this person I want to represent the talent that's not yeah. like the go-to that's yeah. like this person's always the person that's shooting the covers to this I'm like well there's a lot of other talent out there like, I like to kind of dig. Like, I like what Mickey does where she's like, country music looks like this and posts people that people haven't seen but are so talented. Exactly. You just have to show that talent. And and I know the session world is hard to get in, especially in Nashville. It's a, it's a very small circle. Yeah. But when you have the power, you know, if somebody has, quote unquote, the power, giving even a small opportunity so that person can start making connections and their talent can rise them above like are into at least the mix where they have the opportunities like i always say if you have the opportunity what you do with the opportunity is is up to you but we're not asking for handouts we're just asking for opportunity and asking to be able to be in the space yeah yeah no and that's i mean that's that's huge and um that was something that was really important to me when I did the music video for Southern Curls um, that I wanted um, an all black creative team. One, because I think that in order for me to tell that story 
to do, give that story justice and to not, as we say, tokenize the story or do that. It needed those folks in the room. Mm -hmm. uh, but also I, I was like, I need to, for myself, like, I, I need to do the research and I need to do the work to, to connect and find my, my tribe and my people. And, and as you say, like give each other opportunities, right? Like mm -hmm. create those doors, even at the levels, you know, that, that we're at to create those doors and those spaces for those people. So if you, I've got an, um, some amazing people, if you want. Uh, oh, some, I want them. I want to know because yeah. it's just, I always say, I don't want to be hypocritical. So like what I speak, I want to be doing that in my actions as well. Yeah. Like I always like, I was, I was on like my Instagram stories earlier and people were like, you always say buy black, but it's like your makeup black. And I'm like, yeah, my makeup's black owned. I, I wear black owned for the most part, not a hundred percent, but for the most part I wear black owned stuff because I'm very big on trying my hardest to, to buy black when possible. So yeah. I try to like bring that to awareness. But I'm like, also a lot of people don't know that there are black owned companies. What's black owned? What's this? Yeah. What's that like, like all of these things. I'm like, let's, I'm so big on like generational well, like that's my kick this year. It's like, let's just feed into the communities that need to be fed so yeah. that we can build up and compete on a level. And that's outside of even just music. I'm like, I'm like, okay, my Google, like if you go on my thing, I'm like, it's always like, who owns this company? What yeah. do they support? Yeah. Like, what's going on? Like where, how can I bring my, my, my money? Where's my money going? Yeah. That goes into like, if I'm paying somebody to do my hair, what, if I'm going to have to pay somebody no matter what for the video. Yeah. Why don't I pay somebody that looks like me? Yeah. And also knows how to do my hair. How did you hair? That was the super like, I'm like, cause um, let me tell you, I've had some people in Nashville and LA that um, I paid good money to do my hair. And then I've had to do my hair yeah. after I paid them the money. Cause yeah. um, it was bad. Oh. I know you understand. <laughs> I know well, that was when, when it came to Southern curls. Cause Curls was such a huge, right, a motif throughout the song. Nice. song Beautiful like, song. I love girls, it. You know, they need to be popping. And yes. it was amazing. My creative director, um, Curry, who's a hundred, you have to reach out to her, work with her. She's incredible. Yes. Um, she's a, a black queer femme um, in Nashville, and she's insanely amazing. And she's also a, a curl, like, expert. And so just, like. Always need curl experts. It was it was amazing having, you know, her do my hair. And then I also had um, a black makeup artist, just like the confidence that I had to be able to walk onto that set. Like you're already worried about so many things about how you're going to be, you know, singing or looking and all of this. And to just be able to sit back and say, I have utmost confidence in how my hair looks and how my face mm -hmm. looks because I'm with people who just know and not having to be anxious in the mm -hmm. air of like, what's going to happen. Am I just, did I just waste all this money? Am I going to ruin all this? Is it going to look bad? And to just like, just to feel. Did they make you look all white and like washed yeah. out. <laughs> it's nice to sometimes just sit there and like fe feel glam and feel like, wow, this is it. I'm making this music video. I'm doing all this. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, even going on stage, right? Like having someone do that and to get that kind of like, and I know this is just like, you know, there's so many problems in the world that this doesn't, it's, uh, you know, not, that insanely important but it but it it it's all of those little things that for an artist it is you know to, to it be it is important because it is like yes there are there are some huge problems in this world yeah there's some big stuff but also just even us saying like well it doesn't matter it does matter because other yeah. races don't have that problem if i am white then I, there is a not a makeup artist that, that can make me look great there's a lot yeah. of people that can do my hair if it's straight there's a there's just endless amounts of that talent but we are we are we nurturing the people that can make us feel just as comfortable walking mm -hmm. onto the stage walking into a photo shoot walking onto a set like that's important because we are valid too like we need to acknowledge that though that's not a huge like life problem and it could sound like like a first world issue it's still our confidence in our it's our job yeah it's our job to still yeah. be confident and look and look the part like mm -hmm. it's what's expected so we want the people that have the tools to help us show up professionally 
Yeah. And I think there's also just such a connection, at least for black women, with our hair and our identity and our hair yes. and feeling of, you know, of self-worth and confidence. Um, mm -hmm. it, it took me many years to figure out my hair and how to do it, how to love it and nurture it. Mm -hmm. um, and with that, you know, I was also nurturing and learning to love myself. Like there's that, there's that huge connection with black women and our hair that I think other folks might not feel. Like I think everybody feels a connection to, to their beauty and all of that, but there's something about, you know, our hair is something that is, is policed, right? There are rules about our hair and it's professionalism and everything like there's- You can get fired, yeah, you can. You can get fired and there's so much to it that I think it goes beyond hair. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that we're not, we're not, yeah, we're not just complaining when we say that we, we would like to be in a room in which like our hair, we don't have to worry about it, how it's going to be perceived. It's, you know, are we taking up too much space? Are we, you know, doing that and just like, like physical space. Physical I, space. I always say I was at that meeting with um, a label and they were like, you should straighten your hair. And I'm like, what? Well, First of all, we're in Nashville. Like, do, have you not met the humidity up in here? So, so you're telling me that I should should get a weave, which I love. I love wigs. I love weaves. Yeah. I love all sorts of stuff. But I'm like, shouldn't that be my decision? What I do with my hair? If I want to wear it big and huge and and I'm five ten and just be all up in the space, like, yeah, get comfortable with that. That should be okay. Yeah, and it was uncomfortable. And obviously, this was some t some time ago i think it's gotten a little better i don't know if somebody would be so bold to tell me to straighten my hair in the room but maybe they would people are bold people are yeah people are bold but it takes i'm like why are my curls not okay like why it took me a long time to love my curls it took me a long time to be like curls are beautiful and i don't need i don't need to straighten my hair to be beautiful yeah if i want to i can if I want to that's the thing too yeah it's like if i want to I'll do it. And I still even, I'm like, you know what? I should just like have a fun day and just blow up my hair. Just like, yeah. <laughs> and just like confuse everyone on my timeline. Cause I'm like, Oh, so, you know, my girl hair, but it's like the ability to have that choice and have both mm -hmm. of them seen as not only beautiful, but like acceptable and professional. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think, I think we have this power black women with the, all of the incredible things that we can do with her hair and how they can look. like it's a power like there's we can do so many cool things with our hair that yeah. we just like haven't I, even myself i've been exploring different styles and things that now with my kind of idea of like i want to take up space like i want mm -hmm. to be, i want to let my hairstyles be big i think i even when i first transitioned to, to being all curly i still was styling in ways of white hair that I just wanted it to be, you know, close. Yeah, I've always, I always like try to pull it like back and have it so smooth. I'm like, why? Oh, and what? I love that at times, but I think just even letting myself like explore all the possibilities of what it can do. And I mean, in this exploration, I, I will admit, I have some bad hair days as I figure it out, <laughs> but that's okay. You know, it's like, it's, it's, it's so important for us to own you yeah. with some twists would be oh. insane. Like I know. Some, oh. I really, I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to keep myself, my bank account is trying to keep me every day from um, getting some braids, but I, <laughs> with this heat. <laughs> it's the same thing. I was yeah. like, do I need some rose today? Do I need it? I'm like, I'm always like, why didn't I learn how to braid? I, I, could, I could be doing so well with that side hustle. <laughs> I mean, I'd have arthritis, but I could be like, you could be doing it, yeah. I could be like, yeah, I'm always like, mm -hmm. and yeah, I went to a black college. I'm like, do I not know anybody around here that braids? I, I have to know somebody I know. that braids on a discount. <laughs> no, and there's part of me too that especially like with the song Southern Curls all about my hair, mm -hmm. I'm like, I feel like for my next thing, I just want to like have braids and switch it up. So like all the way people are like, wait, you were just talking about your curls, but now you have different hair. And I'm like, this is all me. This is all you know, who I am and, and everything too. It doesn't need to also be just about that. It can, it can be well, so. Well, that's the thing. Like our, I think that if we're going by like European standards, 
they people keep their hair the same they have this like look but the beauty of like you're saying being black or, or being multiracial like and all these things is that we can switch it up and culturally we always have yeah so it's being true to like yeah i can wear a protective hairstyle or or yeah i can wear a wig because also like yeah my hair does not behave in the same way as yours yeah. it doesn't i can't blow it out every day like i it's gonna fall out my head so i'm gonna figure out a different way and that's exciting because how lucky how lucky am i i'm always like beyonce you are amazing like the amount of wigs i just want to see your wig closet because it's yeah. probably those lace fronts are in sierra like i like i'm always like picking artists i'm like yeah she's always wearing like a natural style that is it's just that is beautiful and stunning but like i'm always like you are just taking it back to the ancestors i love it i mm -hmm. love it and i love that it's being shown in mainstream yeah and i think as it gets shown in mainstream and other genres it will slowly come to our genre but like get comfortable with us showing ourselves because that's also country music is being authentic and if we're trying to be like somebody else if I'm trying to be like Carrie Underwood or another artist is that yeah. me being true to our genre no my genre is me I'm a California girl whose roots are in the south like that's who I am yeah. and that's okay because I spent so much time being like, oh, but I have to be like this kind of country. And then if I wore my hair straight or if I do this or if I try to be like Mickey, then they'll let me in. No, if I try to be like me, I have a chance to be let in. If I am me. And if they don't want that, that's their loss. Yeah, that's their loss. Because I'm like, talent not speaks for itself, not in an arrogant way, but like we all are talented. Yeah. Like all, by all of us, I say all oh, like, this sister circle that we have created that is full of some insane talent. Like, insane. I just can't wait. I just, it's insane. Like yeah. the best. Like when I heard your song, I was like this, I was like, yes. <laughs> like Same. somebody, I was like, dang it. I didn't write that song. <laughs> oh, I don't know. It was, I'm, I'm very proud of the song. I, it's, it's something special. Even, yeah. you know, I think just the fact that I wrote it and I got to do the video and my, um, my great aunt is in it. So my grandmother's sister, um, uh, is the, like the grandmother figure. I didn't even know that. That makes me love it even more. <laughs> Asheville. And it was really important to me to have her as part of it. One to just show kind of like the generational passing down mm -hmm. of strength that I think black women, um, do they, they pass that down that resiliency. Um, but also just for my family to like have that memory and to have that mm -hmm. time. And um, I'm, I'm just so grateful for, you know, everything that that song has done um, for me in this past year. Um, so I, I love it. I love it. I love, I truly just, you know, like I'm a fan, like I am a fan of you and your writing and I can't wait to create with you and like yeah. to see where, where this career takes you because I one of the things I just the reason I don't want us to be tokenized in the country genre is because I feel like there's so much talent that I don't want it to be a trend I want it to be respected yeah and so I want us to all take up the space that we need to be taking up because yeah. it's the talent it, the work has been put in and now it's just let's grow let's learn let's have the opportunities and let's let this talent and these songs show that they fit in and they are just as good as, as any other one. Exactly. Like, just cause the story isn't your story. It's somebody's story. Like, I think that's important. Like, um, every time I write, I say, I'm writing my story or who I'm writing with story. <laughs> and it's going to relate to somebody. When you think of how many people are in this world, or else somebody's yeah. going to relate to this story. Somebody's going to feel this. I don't need to think about the 20 people in that business meeting that it might not relate to because that's not who I'm writing it for. You know, first we're writing it for ourselves and for our growth. And then we're writing it for the girl that's sitting in her room, you know, that wants to understand her hair and wants to understand this, this skin color and wants to understand the journey. And who else can sing those songs? Who else can write those songs? But somebody that's experienced it. Exactly. Who else can sing to those those girls or those boys or like who else can tell them that? Yeah. But us. So we 
I say we even owe it to them to keep keep standing our ground and holding our space oh. and taking up so much space. Because I'm like, I'm always like, y'all, you aren't going to shush, shush me. Yeah. No. <laughs> Not that too many people are trying. Yeah. I do get some DMs and I do get some hate, but, and I'm sure there'll be more, but. Yeah. No, I've, I've just shushed them out. You just go mm, blocked and blessed. Yeah. It's hard to know that like, and, and to tell up and coming artists, like in this genre that I think like people have to face in any genre, like as you get bigger, right, you're going to have the haters and everything, mm -hmm. but like, there's an element to like knowing that you're going to get hatred based on like who you are and people thinking that you don't belong in a genre outside of the like just general troll haters right yeah, like you're you gonna have layer, and then you have the next layer that is just a genre that we created by the way it's, yeah exactly always and so it's a genre like that we created <laughs> yeah exactly but it's also like you get people right like at the same time while somebody can be looking right at mickey and saying wow I see myself in this genre, I want to be in this genre. They can also see the hate that she gets and what she has to put up with and say, just kidding, I don't want that. I'm gonna go do some R&B. Like, like, there are some people who, I mean, even for myself, I spent so many years running from calling myself a country music artist, right? There's so much talent that's coming from, you know, even I just think of the South, right? Like so many folks who, grow up listening to this music that might be in this music and see what it's like and say no thanks you know that's not I don't want to want to put up the battle for it yeah because that is it is yeah. a, you know she's and, taking a lot of cuts for us but there's still more glass to oh be broken <laughs> like i just recently i wrote this song with britney actually um oh, month ago, ago um that i'm really excited about and I played it for my mom and my mom was like, well, Julie, this is a beautiful song. I love it. But I'm like, I'm kind of afraid for you to put out the song. Um, Cause it also talks about kind of issues of, of race and things. And, um, she's like, I'm just, I'm like, I'm worried for you of what like people will say. Like yeah. there's lots of people that are going to love it, but you might get a lot of hate. Um, mm -hmm. and it scares me as your mom. And, and, that sort of thing that I'm like, I haven't even released it or done anything. And to know that like, as there's I get, already the fear that might be part of that future for me. Mm -hmm. um, while at the same time, acknowledging as a mixed person, I, you know, I, I also have privileges being in this genre of being white adjacent. Yes. Uh, that other artists do not face. And, you know, maybe, and I think about it all the time that like, I was surprised at, I got, you know, some things, of course, uh, little troll things about Southern Curls, but like all in all, it's been a very, you know, well song, but it's like if some other artists had put out the song about their hair in this genre and, you know, colorism is so real, like what would that reaction have been? And that's something that I have, I think about a lot as well as I move through this genre. It's of real. Yeah, I've been like I talk about like Jacques talk like yeah, I'm aware that I can have these conversations and lead these conversations because I'm digestible. Yeah, I'm aware of the tone of my voice. I'm aware of how I am perceived in a room. Yeah, like there are people who are like you're black, and I'm like I am, folks, I am. <laughs> like they're like I'm like what do I have to do? Like do I have to speak a certain way? Do I have to? Yeah, but that people have all these like preconceived notions. But I'm like yeah. I have lighter skin. I have less kinky hair. Like I have these things that are culturally easier just to process. And if we, if we would go back to like slavery and things like we'd be in the house and we'd have privileges and we'd have yeah. more power than somebody yeah. in the field. And that is a real thing. That's not like being like, guys, there's not slavery anymore. Slavery created colorism and colorism is very, very real. Yeah. In, in this society and in just the black community as well. Like mm -hmm. colorism is a constant thing that is so ingrained in us. Yeah. That I think that people don't acknowledge enough of. Mm -hmm. Like we're not all equal. Yeah. In the yeah. way that we can 
in our marketability and in our digestibility and in what we can say. Like yeah. we, you and I can say different things than, than a Brittany can. Yeah. It, I mean, we all can say the same thing, but the way it's received. The way it's the received. Is going to be different. Is going to be so different. And mm -hmm. I think it's, it's also this, as I said, like, as we're, we're kind of moving back to the world and opportunities might present itself and we're thinking of what we're going to take and all of that. Like there's that acknowledgement with that tokenization of like, that we might be, you know, black enough so that they can have that diversity, but not too, like we're digestible, right? We're not, we're, we're black enough, but not too black that we threaten, right? Their system. The status quo. Exactly. Mm -hmm. we, that we threaten the status quo. And that's something that's, that's constantly running through my mind, um, you know, as, as an artist, as, as a, you know, mm -hmm. a, a artist as well, um, to just know that that's, the case uh, often if and I'm I, the people that I work with and and even like having these conversations and talking about it because I what I've learned in this last year is that if you don't want to think that I'm black and I stand up for the things that I stand up for you could watch this page and you'll know I do because I realized yeah. I was I kind of played into the genre a little bit more and I think it's fine I think it's fine for people not to speak about politics and not yeah. to speak about things if they yeah. don't want to people have labels there are a lot of factors that you have to put into account. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I'm like, I'm going to speak about it because I was realizing how many people were complaining to me and rights and things about things that had to do with the pandemic. And there was so much race involved in it and not realizing that I'm black and that would affect me. Like they weren't correlating the fact that, oh, we're talking to somebody that's black. Yeah. <laughs> like they had just their mind had already never gone to that place. And I was like, Oh, I'm not being loud enough. Like I am yeah. allowing you to be comfortable yeah. with what you're feeling. And that's my boundary that I was letting you step over. So now I'm like, no, yeah, no, black people didn't cause this. So no, we're not going to say that those microaggressions aren't cool for me because though you might get away with saying it near me, you would never say that if I was dark skinned yeah. because you'd be very aware that that person is black. Yeah. I'm just as black. Like, like my dad is black, like the same things are happening in my world. You just don't see it because I'm the only person that you might be dealing with. That's exactly. that white. Yeah. And that's and why realizing that we might be the only few people because there's not a lot that have gotten through the gates. There's just not yeah. a lot yet. And maybe in five years, that'll be different. Hopefully, hopefully in 10 years, it's a whole different landscape. Yeah. But teaching people how to treat one another is a key for the next person that comes in. Exactly. So people aren't experiencing those microaggressions that I feel I experience weekly. Yeah. Weekly. Yeah. It's not letting someone in the door, but saying like, once you're in this, like you belong in this room mm -hmm. and showing things outside of that. And yeah, as you're saying with kind of like, with um, being louder, like that's something that as I've developed my artist voice, it's like, I don't want it to be a question of who I am, what I'm going to talk about and what I'm going to, look like or do or say and the things that care to me like that yeah. shouldn't that's not a question like yeah. you should you should be able to look at my social media talk to me anything and you'll mm -hmm. you'll know so it should not be a surprise yeah and um i think with that it's like i'm gonna set my boundaries of like this is who i am as an artist mm -hmm. and i don't want to work with people that would try to silence that or kind of tone that down um, and I think just as I stay true to that, I, I'll find my tribe, I'll find my yes. people, my things, but also find my voice and find my songs and find my audience too. I think something as well that like, I think everybody's trying to figure out as the genre is growing, right. And as genres are mixing and things, mm -hmm. um, I think you look at like Casey Musgraves, right. That she pulled in a lot of people that said, Oh, I don't like country. I don't listen to country, but they love Casey, right? Yeah. Or that love Britney, right? Like there's people out there that I think the industry hasn't figured out yet how to tap into because mm -hmm. being so long focused on radio and all of that. And like, I've just come to the realization that as much as I want to use my music to bring as many people in, there are just going to be some people and I just have to acknowledge that are in this space, you know, that are the ones that are donating to Morgan Wallen's kind of comeback campaign. Like those are never going to be 
Those are going to be our people. And I change myself to try to cater to those. I, if I be my, if I am myself and all of this, as I'm finding things like that audience will come like that mm -hmm. audience will come as we are loud and who we are, that there are people that say, Oh wait, Hey, do you hear what's going on in country music right now? Like I want to be a part of that too, but mm -hmm. they don't know that yet because we're not being heard and we're not, yeah, being loud enough or people aren't listening to us as we are, as we're trying yeah. to do. And I think there's this whole untapped market of audiences and, and people that would listen to this genre if they just, if they just knew that we were here. And I think there's a lot of people that listen in, in secret. Like I remember when, um, and as we're coming to a close, I remember when Mickey played the Grammys mm -hmm. and I had friends from Howard and friends from Spelman that texted and like, okay, because there was like a few other people that played and they were like asking like, okay, is it okay if I support this person and this person? Like, I love, like I watched it from Mickey, but like these other artists, can I like support them? Like, are they good people? And I was like, yeah. And I tried to tell people, I'm like, these are good people or these people, oh. I'm like, I don't know if them as a person, but I know what they support and yeah. And that's, if that, yeah. So I know, so I think even people that are wanting to like support country music, they're so, the ground is rocky and I'm like find the artists that you love find the artists that support the things that you believe in yeah and as we stand our ground like there are people that I won't work with and there are opportunities that I've given up for yeah. for quick success um because I'm like that doesn't align with what I speak and what I say and I yeah. can't be loud in that room because I know what they believe yeah, and I know that it's about money for them. And it's about like, it's very capitalistic. And yes, we live in a capitalistic society, but I don't want my art to be based solely on money. Yeah, I want it to be based on just love mm -hmm. and be able to and you know that you know, if you're around people you love. I know if I'm on a tour, I want to know that I can be myself around the people on the tour, like the whole energy of everything. And that's how I've done my career. And I backed away from country for a long time. I lived in LA for almost a decade. And um, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna stay over here. But that didn't feel authentic. It didn't feel authentic to try to just sing pop and R&B and do that. I'm like, I wanna be me. And there's a reason. And as, as this year happened, I was like, oh, this is the reason. This, this is, is the reason why we're in Nashville. This is the reason why we're doing it. Because we are at a time when I always go like Mickey and Reese need backup. Like they need people ah. just to like, <laughs> to keep the message pushing forward. Cause it can't be done by one or two or three women. It has to be a movement. And I say the movement's here, but I always look like it's not going anywhere. That's the key. It needs to not go anywhere. It needs to stay. It needs to have roots so that it, the plants that grow are here 50 years from now. Yeah. yeah. And That's my belief. That's my TED talk. It's not only that, but it's like, it's hard to grow roots right in poison soil. So it's like mm -hmm. you, there also has to be the work in the grounds around like, well, we're trying to cultivate our seed, right? Like we've planted the seed and we're doing what we mm -hmm. can to water it and to do what we're supposed to do. It sometimes can feel impossible if right, the systems aren't there to support. Like if, if, if we're just going to be putting all of this effort into, into, a genre that's that won't give us that energy back and it's so spraying us like we're weeds like we're the weeds yeah like we're and letting the, the weeds like rise yeah and so it's like i think that in order for us to kind of grow these roots it's funny i'm like looking at my plant as i'm like saying that. I'm, I'm like do you do you need any water um i like helping you am i helping you grow um you know it's uh it's helpful to have people around you that are also working with you to try to till your land. Um, knowing that it can, they could bear that fruit too. They could benefit too. And they, mm -hmm. but also like doing that because they want to see you succeed too. And um, I think, uh, oh, it's a good You're not the weeds, you beautiful flowers. We are beautiful flowers. <laughs> we are, we're not weeds. We, yeah. We are just trying to be some, be a beautiful garden of flowers mm -hmm. and, yeah. organic fruit and vegetables yeah. <laughs> like our, i'm always like i'm organic <laughs> the whole garden of country music is going to look so much more beautiful and have so many you know different 
fruit to eat and all these sorts of things. Like it's only gonna make this genre better and, uh, you know, just bring in more people and make it more colorful and lively. And, and, and just... I always say for the people that are, are about the dollar, the more people you bring in, the more money you're gonna make. The more money bro. you see. Like, I'm always like, look who's spending the money. I'm like, I was like, why are you trying to keep black folk out of this? I'm like, they spend money, folk. They yeah. spend money. They yeah. will stream your record. They will, they will do it. Yeah. Like, so I know. I'm always like, don't take, kick them out. Like, let them in. I know. Make, make them feel safe. Make them feel comfortable. Make, yeah, make was... us all feel comfortable. Men and I... women, you know, LGBT. Like, we all just need to, we need to be the love that we say we are. Yeah. We need to be the energy that we say we are. Like, we need to have it in action continuously. Yeah. Like, for a genre that's very bad time, like, being Christian and being all these things, like we need to be that, be love, be love. Yeah. And that's important. And I'm very happy that you wrote that song. And I'm so excited to hear what you wrote with Brittany. Um, Eric, I'm really excited for that one too. I'm really excited for that. I'm gonna have to share with you what I wrote with um, Cassidy because it's, um, oh, it's a powerful one too that comes out this summer and I'm just yeah no I'm excited you'll have to send it to me and I'll send you the... I'll send it to you and um and then y'all will hear it you'll hear both of them eventually you will don't you worry we're just gonna <laughs> leave you on the hook <laughs> um but thank you thank you so much for taking time out of your Sunday to to talk with me and to just and to hold space for these conversations because the reason I have them is I believe conversations create humanness and you have to believe somebody's a human to really start to change and have empathy for them. Yeah. So this is about creating empathy for one another, which I think as a society, we lack. We lack a lot of empathy in this generation. So thank you. Oh, thank you so much for asking us. This is so fun and it's, it's, it's just so refreshing as well to just like sit and talk with a sister yes. and like, you know, like sometimes you just like, you just need it. I think like people in this town are so there there's some incredible, incredible people in this town, incredible allies. I've met some of my best friends here allies, but mm -hmm. sometimes just that difference of just getting to like talk with with the sister yeah. and it's it feels really great. Somebody yeah. that understands edges. They, I'm like I just <laughs> <laughs> understands. Yeah. I I love it. And we're gonna have to have so many more of these because Yes. Your energy is contagious and I'm just like staring at your curls and I'm just happy. Oh. Thank and you. I think I almost had a bandana on my head earlier. Oh my you could see the hair tie. Like I was about to do it. And then I'm like, I, I'm my like, roommate, okay, we'll just work with this part. Got a <laughs> I'm telling you, my roommates can attest to this. You know, people say it's hot girl summer. I'm making it personally, it's bandana girl summer. I've bought like 10 bandanas. So I'm trying to like wear, because I've realized that my hair is right. It's going to get humid. It's going to be up a lot. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I feel like the way I'm going to play with it a lot is it's to like grade. The accessory. Do the bandana, maybe bandana and like some bangs, bandana in the hair, braided with the bandana, bandana. Like I'm just going to go crazy with bandanas this summer. I so, love this. You, I'm excited heard, to watch your summer flourish. You heard watch it here. Your hair. Watch your hair journey. This I, <laughs> it's all the hashtag for it. I then, know. Hashtag bandana girl summer. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be along. I'm going to do it. I have like a whole stack of bandanas up there. You can't see Perfect. them, but they're there. Perfect. I did the same thing. So I'm like this is not going to be down because it keeps me warm in the winter, but it does not keep me cool. Nope. So. <laughs> it's up. It is it's going to be. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. I will save this and share it on my page and um, for anybody that came in late, but I'm excited. I'm already excited for our next conversation. Already me excited. Too. Me too. So have a beautiful day and enjoy Nashville. And I can't wait to see you. I'll be there next month. So yeah. I'll yeah. Thank I can't wait to see you in person. Vaccination. Yeah. Woo -woo. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Everybody listened to nice little comments. I was watching them. And saying, Yay. Happened. Thank you, everybody. And uh, I'm just, now I'm in a great mood for the rest of the day. Oh, me too. <laughs> All right. Bye, y'all. Bye. Uh -huh. Bye.